The Three Angels Media International, 3AMI, is a Christian media organization that creates multicultural and multiracial value-based inspirational contents and entertainment, using innovative technology. We tell and share stories of hope that shape and mold character, challenge our audiences to schedule their priorities, heal, uplift, and restore. 3 AMI will enrich viewers and diverse populations and families through films, series, shows, comedies, romance, thrillers, documentaries, mission stories, music, faith-based sermons, health and lifestyle, and other media presentations etc. to empower Adventist families and the Christian communities around the world to live on purpose while we wait for the second and soon return of our Lord, Jesus Christ. Subscribe to 3AMI at 3AMIFilms.com Subscribe also to 3AMI YouTube channel. Welcome to True Angels Media International Lesson Discussion. We're excited to share this incredible moment with you to engage in inspirational discussions for daily living. I am your host, Pastor John. I'm excited to share this wonderful time with you with my co-host, Pastor Jen. Welcome to 3AMI, 3 Angels Media International. Let's study the Word of God. Amen. And we're excited that we are sharing this wonderful time uh, with you, with Elder Babalola. You're welcome in Jesus' name. Amen. And Elder Babalola's amazing wife, Dr. Esther. Welcome, everyone. We will all be blessed as we study. Amen. Amen. We are looking at the source of life. Amen. Wow. What a wonderful opportunity to, to know that life didn't just begin by itself, hmm. but that there is a source, a source of life. In fact, I looked at this lesson again in another lens, and I said the finality of Christ. Amen. The finality of Christ, because he's the source of life. He's, a, he's, he's our source. As we go into this, let us sing Wonderful Peace. Wonderful Peace. Mm -hmm. this wonderful study that we're about to have. Amen. Please be with us. Amen. And let your spirit be with us. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 The source of life. That's the finality of Christ. And when Jesus made that incredible statement that no other person has made in the history of the entire human race, you understand that he is the finality of everything. 
I am the way. I am the truth. And I am the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. That's a very powerful claim that no other person can lay such a claim but Jesus. In other words, every human being that will be saved at the end of the earth history has been saved only because of Jesus. Only because of Jesus. So John began by telling us that Jesus is that one. Jesus claimed that as he claimed to Moses in the Old Testament also that I am. That same I am who so I am. Yes. When Moses encountered him in the burning bush and said, when they ask me, who shall I say that you are? And the burning bush spoke, and that was Christ saying, I am who I am. He said to Moses, as we saw that in Exodus 3 verse 14, and this same God, the I am, then became flesh, and he dwelt among us, and we also beheld his glory. We saw him. We know it happened. Jesus walked on this earth. The glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. I am the way, the truth, and the life. The I am is the light of the world, the bread of life, as we have studied previously the gate or the door of the sheep, the good shepherd, and the true vine. Mm -hmm. So there is just no other way to God, to eternal life, except through Jesus. Yes. Whether you're a Christian or not, if anyone will be saved at all, and yes, we know by faith we shall be saved. It is because of the ultimate sacrifice of Jesus of Christ. Jesus Christ. So in John 1 verse 1, we see him as a life giver. We see him as the creator. And the apostle clearly states that Jesus is God. He's the divine son. And we also read in John 1 verse 4, in him was life. Because in Genesis 1 verse 1, we see him as the author of creation. In John 1 verse 1 again, he reaffirmed that he is the one who created. In six days, he was able to complete everything he created and he rested on the seventh. Then here again, John is telling us in John 1 verse 4 that in this creator, in him, the Logos, was life. And the life was the light of men. And the light shines as, as, as it goes on. Mm -hmm. you know, so the reference to life here has to be divine life. Mm -hmm. Underived. Eternal self-existence. Mm -hmm. He didn't need anything to sustain to give him the, to life. Give him the life. life. He, he, he didn't need, uh, you know. Mm -hmm. Because he has life within himself, he can lay it down did. his life and take it, it up back. again. And he made that claim. He's the only one in history who's actually achieved that, who has the power to lay down his own life, to end his own life, and then take it up again. That's so, such a beautiful thing. And because he has life within, he can give life to whom he will. Hallelujah. That is amazing. That the author of life decided to share life, to create life. And that's why we are all here. Yes, yes, yes. That's why we are all here. So in John 1, verse 4 and 5, uh, beside the reference to the source of life on our planet, we also know that the word is also linked to salvation. I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. Throughout the rest of John, this idea of life, Zoa, as we say in uh, Greek, is most often expressed as everlasting life, the promise of salvation. Thus, the one who gave life at creation is the same one who brings salvation mm. to eternal life, to a lost world. Jesus loved life. Mm. And the kind of life he gives is a life 
that has meaning. It's not a chaotic one. It's not a miserable life he wants to share. He wants to share something that has quality. So in John 1.29, we see him also as the restorer of life, the one by taking away, who took away the sin of the world. In uh, John 3.16, we see that he's able to grant us forgiveness. Praise the Lord. Whoever believes in To anyone who believes, he grants that forgiveness and the result, the, this is consequential. In the sense that the one who created life is able to forgive no matter what you have done in this life. If you believe and avail yourself to him and confess, he's faithful and just, he will forgive you and he will grant you eternal life to anyone who believes and who accepts him. And that's the beauty of forgiveness. That despite how dark your sins might be, the things you've done in your past history, this is something that only God can do. You yes. confess your genuine about it, he yes. cleans you like you've never seen before. before. So in John 6 verse 40, he has the power to resurrect everyone who died in Jesus. Mm -hmm. Anyone who has ever died in this life, who died in Christ, in John 6 verse 40, we see the author of life has the capacity to restore, to resurrect. Isn't that comforting that our loved ones who have gone before us, who died in Christ, that we will see them again? again. So Jesus has that capacity. He's the author of life to resurrect those who have died before when he returns. And in John 10, 10, that's even, it, it gets more exciting. He said that he is here. The author of life is here to give our life meaning, to give our lives direction, to give our lives purpose, worth, and abundance. Mm -hmm. Because in John 10, 10, he says, the thief comes to steal and, and kill and destroy. But I have come. The author of life has come to give your life abundance, mm -hmm. to sustain your health, to just think about anything that is life meaningful. Life in totality. Yeah. He's there and physical. to give you the whole thing. As Moses lifted this up the serpent in the wilderness, even so... Must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but will have eternal life. There's something I've seen in the John's theme. Life, life, belief, belief, life. It's very important. And no other person has the capacity to do any of this except Jesus. Jesus is the one who can give life. He took up the penalty that was ours so that we might have life he laid down his life christ also desired that we have life and have it more abundantly so uh, and we are not having this life more abundantly after we have died and go to heaven that is when jesus has come the second time and take us back to heaven because we know that when we die we don't go to heaven we go to a grave what i'm trying to explain is that this life is life we will have now in the present times. Mm -hmm. It's not a futuristic, only when we get to heaven then. Jesus said that I'm, I have come to this life, to this world, to give your life in the now. Meaning, purpose, prosperity, abundance, good health. So when you're so going that, through... that is why... Yes. When you see some people who still have, seemingly have everything and they still commit suicide. Yes. They don't have this life. Don't. Because to them there is there is still that emptiness Void. that they are waiting, longing for something to, to feel. feel and when that is not filled, they die. Like my son was just telling me of a musician that committed yeah. suicide this week wow. because his record label cancelled him. Yeah. And you know, I was like, so is that is that your if you don't sing for that like so that is what we are talking about. That's when right. you have more. life in you, yes. when you have Jesus in you, your purpose will be found. Yes. You will know who you are. 
you will not attach your worth yes. to people. Yes. You will not attach they, when they validate. Yeah, you will not attach your worth to somebody's approval. Yes. Because you know that Jesus has approved. If, you. Just think about it this way. Even if you were the only sinner in this world, Jesus will still have come to die for you. That is how important you are. Yes. So when you have this life, it starts now because you have found the meaning of why you Lord. were created. Yes. That fulfillment starts now. You know your purpose. You know why you're created. You live for God. You know that you are here because God wants you to be here. Yes. And that life starts now and leads you to live for the next life. Amen. So how does this promise, this idea of eternal life, how, Elder Bola, how does it impact uh, your temporal life in the now that there is more eternity, eternal life? How does that affect you now? Now, if you look at this life we are in right now, the, pe the best person, the richest person who has everything, if you go closer enough to him to ask him questions, he will still tell you he's not all that has satisfied yes. because he always wants more. <laughs> because there is an area of life where a need needs to be met. Yes. <laughs> so we cannot get our, that fulfillment in this present life. Okay. But the fact that we know that Jesus Christ has promised us eternal life. Yes. Not just eternal life, eternal life with benefits. Yeah. Amen. We I are, like that. It's, it's a total package. <laughs> yes. No sickness. No sickness. It's not like yes. you get this and then you take away this in order to get this. You get everything in total package. Mm. Holistic life. Complete life. Yes. You know that that is ahead of you. You will be able to endure whatever you are going through right now. Mm -hmm. Amen. You will not commit suicide because you are missing out on something. Yes. Because committing suicide is double punishment. Yep. Yes. You'll be guilty of killing somebody, which is yourself. Yes. Because you have taken away a life you cannot create. Yes. You'll be guilty of that. That disqualifies you from going to enjoy that life. Yes. So why don't you endure the pain? And you also inflict a lot of pain to your loved ones. To your loved yes. ones. Yes. So you have not hurt anybody. Yes. And then you have also stopped God from fulfilling his promise in your life. Because if you stay, yes, there is a plan God has it's for you hope. and it will come to pass. Amen. So the hope Amen. of eternal life gives us the strength yes. to continue knowing that whatever we are going through is temporary. All right, Dr. Esther, thank you so very much. Your thought on your temporal situation now and what is to come with eternal life. I know that he has said mostly everything, but what is important to me about knowing that I have eternal life is the fact that it guides my actions of today. Amen. Because I, just like you mentioned, I'm just uh, supporting what he said, just like he mentioned that we are hopeful and we know that that eternal kingdom of God is coming, but it's not just coming to everyone, it's coming to those who believe. Yeah. You will have that eternal life if you believe. And then that increases my faith Amen. in God. Amen. And that's what it should be for all of us too. Because we believe in God, we know we're going to have that eternal life. Then what did God say we should do? For those who believe, these are the things they have to do. Live a Christ-like life and Amen. that kind of a thing. So that's the way I see it. It influences how I do things as a Christian. Amen. Because I do not want to miss that eternal life. Amen. Amen. All right. Uh, I'm going to get uh, Pastor John's thought on this temporal versus eternal. Why at that, Elder Bible, can you open for us John 6, verse 61 through, you read 61 through 68. Yes, Pastor John, what are your thoughts on this temporary <clears throat> versus eternal compared to? What? Knowing that you have eternal yeah. life. Somebody said, um, if you don't drop your bad habits here, it will affect you in heaven. I mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you were to go there with them, <laughs> so 
was like, okay, well, um, well how would you even get there? Yeah. <laughs> so, um, knowing that I have life coming, another life. Better one. The life that, when I wake up, the light that I see is Jesus. Mm -hmm. The light coming from the throne. Because the light in the new world is the light coming from the truth. It's, it gives me this kind of special strength hmm. to know that whatever that I go through here is temporary. Okay. Sure. That there is something greater hmm. that I cannot even imagine. I can only try to imagine, but I can't fully understand or grasp it because it's a situation that you will not understand until you get there. Mm -hmm. So right. it gives me strength. Strength. Okay. All right. Yeah. Strength. All right. Read for us. Thank you. Okay. Read for us. John 6, mm -hmm. 61 to through 68. Yes. Jesus knew that his disciples were grumbling. So he asked, Does this bother you? What if you should see the Son of Man go up to heaven where he came from? The Spirit is the one who gives life. Mm -hmm. Human strength can do nothing. Mm -hmm. The words that I have spoken to you mm -hmm. are from that life-giving spirit. Mm -hmm. But some of you refuse to have faith in me. Jesus said this because from the beginning he knew who would have faith in him. Mm -hmm. He also knew which one would betray him. Mm -hmm. Amen. Then Jesus said, you cannot come to me unless the Father makes you want to come. That is why I have told these things to all of you. Mm. Because of what Jesus said, many of his disciples turned their backs <laughs> on him and stopped following him. Mm. Yep. Jesus then asked the, his 12 disciples <laughs> if they were going to leave too. Mm -hmm. Also, Simon Peter answered, Lord, there is no one else hmm. that there is no one else that we can go to. Your words give eternal life. Amen. 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 That's just the key word. No other person can give us eternal life but Jesus. Amen. That's just the point I wanted you to hear you from the Bible. Hmm. Because the one who Peter is referring to here, your word, that is the Logos. The one who created life in the beginning was the word. The word. The word was and the God. word was with God. And that word was God. So when Peter say you and your word, that is Logos. That is the creator, the author of life. No other person can do this but Jesus. Amen. So that should inspire us. You're going through temporary situations, just know that those are temporary situations. They won't be eternal. They are not eternal. In theology, that's what we call temporal salvation. Hmm. Temporal salvation is a concept of the sufferer and the physician. I have doctors here. You go to the hospital. You are sick. And what does the doctor do? Or the nurse? You have the wound. If the wound is not treated and you're given antibiotics, depending on the kind of wound, that wound can be so much infected and it can have so much bacteria and it kills you hmm. in the long run. Hmm. The doctor will fix the wound, dress the wound, give you injection, then the wound will heal, then you will live. But one day you will still die hmm. after the doctor has treated you, the patient. But the doctor is able to give you what we call temporal salvation. He's able to save that situation, but the doctor cannot give you eternal life. Hmm. Do you get this concept? And even in what you're saying, there's also another temporal of the temporal salvation. Is yes. that when you come, we give you pain medication first. Yes. Hmm, to stop the pain. That's right. So that's another temporal. Why we now start working on the that's <laughs> right. Yes. yes. That's so right. at least you have a temporal relief. That's right. And, and while you feel good, while we now start the that's right. treatment course. Hmm. It's like when someone is hungry and you feed them, they are full. Hunger has left. But again, they'll be hungry <laughs> again. Okay. 
But Jesus is saying, see, I'm the Lord of life. Mm -hmm. I'm the one who fixes things permanently. Mm -hmm. And the one who can take care of your situation. So if you go through that, Jesus has the power. That's why even when people die, Jesus says that he is the bread of life. The meaning that his life, meaning that his life, his death, and his resurrection are the source of eternal salvation. So Jesus is the one, even when you die, he's able to resurrect you. Again, uh, it refers to that life-giving power that brings salvation and meaning to our existence now and even to life without end when our Lord Jesus returns. Just as Jesus became flesh, so the resurrection that Jesus talks about takes place in the time and space and in a physical body. It is a resurrection from the dead, a renewal of the life that we once had in Eden. That kind of life that was promised Adam and Eve where they, are, they were going to live forever. Immortality. The only one who can give it is who? Jesus. Mm -hmm. And now quickly let me summarize it. How do we receive this eternal life? We receive this eternal life first by believing mm -hmm. and accepting Jesus. How do we believe and accept Jesus? We repent. Repentance from our sins and confession of those sins. If you believe in the Lord Jesus with all your heart and you confess him with your mouth. Uh, Paul, is it Paul or Peter? Paul. So Paul, mm -hmm. he said that you and your household mm -hmm. shall be saved. Mm -hmm. That is you believe, mm -hmm. that's the first step. Yes. Then you do what? You confess. 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 So the first step to eternal life is you believe. Believing, you see John keep ham hammering on that believe, believe. Then you accept Jesus, you, you confess your sins, you repent, then you now embrace Christ's lifestyle. You walk with him, his teachings, his values. And through the enabling power of the Holy Spirit, you become victorious to things that you didn't used to do, that you used to do, now you don't want to do them again because the power of the Holy Spirit has taken over your life. And finally, we walk and live by faith, accepting God's standard and then through Christ's grace. If we do this consciously and surrender our lives to Jesus, then eternal life has already begun. Isn't that amazing? That even if we die now, temporarily, because we have accepted Jesus, eternal life already has kicked in for us. Yes. So that is something that is very amazing. So I really encourage you to give your hearts to Jesus. Stay with us. Don't go away. As we return, we will continue this conversation with you. God bless. The Three Angels Media International, 3AMI, is a Christian media organization that creates multicultural and multiracial value-based inspirational contents and entertainment using innovative technology. We tell and share stories of hope that shape and mold character, challenge our audiences to schedule their priorities, heal, uplift, and restore. 3 AMI will enrich viewers and diverse populations and families through films, series, shows, comedies, romance, thrillers, documentaries, mission stories, music, faith-based sermons, health and lifestyle, and other media presentations etc. to empower Adventist families and the Christian communities around the world to live on purpose while we wait for the second and soon return of our Lord, Jesus Christ. Subscribe to 3AMI at 3AMIfilms.com Subscribe also to 3AMI YouTube channel. Welcome back. I just want you to reflect on the first time you gave your life to Christ. Man. If you have given your life to Christ. I recall I gave my life to Christ over and over again. But I recall this particular experience that I had finished rededicating my life to Christ. It was on a Sabbath day. And I 
just just this thing that the Bible said, you're washed. It's like heaven just washed me. Yeah. I could feel the washing. I felt so clean. I was a teenager. And as I'm telling you, I can remember the dress I was wearing that day. I, I always want to relieve that experience that day because it was so real. Amen. I felt as if the Spirit of God descended from heaven and overtook my life. And I felt something different, forceful. That was like, yes, this is a new you. Go. I still remember that day. My father called me and told me to get something from his car for him. And I went to his car, I got the thing, and, and I, I was walking as if I was walking in the air. Mm -hmm. There was this transformational power that came upon me, and it has not left me. Amen. Amen. When you have a new birth experience, experience with God, complete, total surrender, yes. God will see it and he will come into your life. Amen. The thing is that when he comes, this bath needs to be renewed over and over again. And once you're always able to renew it, you will experience the promise that is in John chapter 1, verse 12, where he says, But to all who believe on his name, get the power. he has given them the power. To become the sons and daughters of God. Yes. That power will come upon you. Amen. The same power that Jesus says. And the, the power will come upon you that you will be witnesses for me in Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. in Judea, mm -hmm. And to the end of the world. Yes. Because there is this power that comes upon you. That when it comes upon you, you can't hide it. Yes. It will push you to shine for the Lord. Amen. And that is what we are talking about, relieving the new birth. Yes. John wrote his gospel so that we will believe in Jesus. Amen. And that believing we might have eternal life in Jesus' name. Amen. And when you receive this Jesus and experience this bath, yes. you cannot keep it to yourself. Amen. Because this bath has to be relieved and shown for others to believe. Let us read, if anybody gets there before me, Romans 8 verse 16. And we'll see the, the principle about salvation in Jesus. That Romans here. 8, 8, 16. 8 16 says, The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And I, I want to add 17. Go okay. ahead. And if children, then hairs. Yes. And if hairs of God, and joint hairs with Christ, mm -hmm. if indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. So, the spirit is affirming yes. that we are God's children. Amen. That spirit is a spirit that comes upon you when you start living the new birth. Amen. And you will know that something is different in your life. Because that spirit will affirm it not just to you, even to other people that this is my child now. This is a person that now has a different relationship with me. And then when that happens, there's a benefit, like you said earlier. We become joint heirs. Because the Bible tells us that God the Father has given everything. And Jesus said, All power. He has given everything to Jesus. And so we becoming co heirs with Jesus means that we also are partakers of what God the Father has given to his son. And the good news is also, Jesus said, if you believe in me, 
greater things than this <laughs> will you do when I ascend to heaven. Yes. Mm -hmm. So that all these are comforting to us, telling us that believing in Jesus, living the new birth, is a thing that is cherishable, is an experience we can miss, and that is one of the things that John was trying to affirm that for us Christians, or even if you're not a Christian, the purpose of, one of the purposes of John writing his gospel is that we might believe in Jesus as God and allow him to come into our life. And we have a new birth in him because his words are the words of eternal life. And then we live as though, and in fact, really because we are going to become finally reunited with him when he comes again. Amen. Faith, biblical faith based on the work of the Holy Spirit in our hearts is the foundation of our faith. Yes. Faith is the great blessing. The eye that sees, the ear that hears. The humanistic approach to faith states that we must find a foundation. That is the humanistic aspect. Mm -hmm. The criteria for faith before we believe. That's data. We have to have the data, empirical evidence. Yes. Yes. In contrast, <laughs> the biblical approach states that faith is the foundation. Amen. So you don't have to find the foundation first yes. before you believe. It's the faith that is the foundation. Mm -hmm. And that foundation, which is faith, is a gift from God. Amen. So we start with the foundation which is faith in itself. And then from having that faith, we now go into more understanding Amen. and grace in the one whose words is eternal life. So if someone were to ask you, what is your faith based on? How would you respond? I would say my faith is based on the word of God. Amen. From the scripture that we read, the vivid account of great men of God who by inspiration put the word of God together. Amen. And I believe strongly in the works that Jesus did. My faith is based on all of that. Amen. And the words that he himself said about himself. So, yes. Okay. That's enough for us. Amen. Yeah. Because you, you, that's why he said, those who worship God, they worship in spirit. Mm -hmm. True. You believe what you have not seen. Yes. Without having a belief, you cannot work with God. Yes. So you need to believe. You have, that's, it's that faith that helps you to connect with him constantly, even when it's difficult to do so. Yes. Amen. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I want to chip in here on this new birth, believing is so exciting at the only time God will share his glory with humanity is at this transformation of those who have given their lives, their hearts, that Jesus said that, that he will also be glorified. Mm -hmm. And we together. Hey, God says, I don't want to share my glory with anybody, but because of our belief, whether we are dead or whether we are alive, at the appearing of Jesus, at his glorification, at the end of everything in human history, God will also say, well done, yeah. my faithful servant. He will shake our hands yeah. and he will glorify us together in Amen. Jesus. Amen. So, faith is believing, not just that God can, but that God will. Amen. Amen. Once you get to that level of not maybe, maybe not. <laughs> God will. Amen. That is where faith comes in. Amen. And then you allow what you put on your signature. Believe in God and leave the consequences of your obedience to Amen. him. That is the kind of faith we are praying for. Amen. Yeah. Jesus Christ said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No yes. one comes to the Father except through me. Yes. Recently, I and my wife, we went hiking. And I saw under the rock on top of the mountain there, we kind of 
water was dripping, coming yes. out, coming out, just like that. And it gathered somewhere from a pool. Wow. Mm. And I quickly remembered my geography. Okay. How rivers Form. come to be. Yes. Now, imagine a river that forgets its source. What will happen to it? dry up. It's going to dry up. Yes. Unfortunately, this is what happened and is still happening in the life of some people. Jesus Christ has identified himself as the source of life. But do you know that Jesus Christ was rejected? Yes. Rejecting the source of no. life. Yes. The light shines in darkness and the darkness did not comprehend it. Unfortunately. Unfortunately. <laughs> he was sent, he lived among us, and his people did not accept him. They rejected the light he brought. He was so bad, and he struggled to keep teaching them. Still, they kept asking questions that people who are learned, like my wife said the other time, <laughs> should not. <laughs> be asking yes said he was in the world and the world was made through him yes. and the world did not know him mm -hmm. he came to his own and his own did not receive him yes that's tragic yeah. to Impressive. reject to reject the i am that, that i, I am, am. Mm. that's very tragic so why was jesus christ rejected he was rejected because people did not accept his word. Yes. They did not accept his word. Maybe he was too good to, to be true to them. <laughs> yeah, it can or, be. Right? Or it was not packaged in the way they expected, <laughs> they expected it. I think this is the second one. Is that yeah. the, uh, the packaging. How can, how can, <laughs> he, how can <laughs> he come from Nazareth? Nazareth. Nazareth. Out of all people. Yeah. Yeah. The Bible said it. Yeah. Yeah. Anything good comes out. out. That's the son of a carpenter. The yeah. carpenter that we know his father and his grandfather. Which, which hospital was he even giving birth to? In a manger. So, you know, <laughs> everything around him was, nothing was extraordinary. The yes. <laughs> so, they were expecting that uh, somebody would be that Messiah Nick in nature yes. must be born differently. Yes. Royal. Everything about him must be different. So they rejected him. Yeah. And yet he's the light of the world. Amen. Now, the problem with we human beings is that a lot of time we believe in our own philosophy. Mm -hmm. We use our little knowledge that is so big in our own sight mm -hmm. to measure the word of God. We explain the word of God through archaeology, sociology, <laughs> philosophy, research. research, psychology, and we subject everything to serious examination, yes. inquiry. We fire, we do cross-examination, and if it survives, then it stands. Mm -hmm. If it does not survive according to our standard, then it, 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 it's not true. Imagine, we all were students, and we continue to be students, we are researchers. Mm -hmm. Imagine when you go to defend your project, mm. yes. your research project. Mm. Yes. Look at the amount of energy, power, strength, everything you put into it. Yes. To go, go and gather empirical facts, yes. and those things are true. And the examiners know they are true. Yes. But when they, <laughs> when, when they cross-examine you, <laughs> throw you questions to here and there, yes. if you do not perform, yes. everything you have done it's is rejected. Mm -hmm. yes. And so, you cannot treat the word of God like that. Mm -hmm. You do not subject the word of God to your own standard. Human standards. It's not possible. Because it's divine. Is from above, it's not from here. Mm -hmm. Yes. And you need the spirit of God to understand it. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, we have subjected the Bible to that. Yes. We have subjected the word of God to that. We question everything. And we if we cannot prove it, then it's not true. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh I remember 1986. Uh somebody, a young man, 20 uh, something, believe God, believe everything. But does not believe that when people die, their spirit, uh, the breath of life or spirit goes to heaven. I see. Say, uh, are you saying God will build library? 
<laughs> and put shapes. <laughs> and then we'll be studying for each person. That's the imagination of that person. Yeah, it's yeah. not like that. Yeah, it's not like that. Yes. But that's, he took it literal. I yeah. see. That God would build a library and put shapes <laughs> and for everybody. And label it. Uh, and label it. <laughs> <laughs> and it. So, Records. that's the kind of literal meaning mm-hmm. and thinking, babyish, infantile <laughs> thinking that we have with yeah. all our philosophy yeah. a lot of time. So, except we worship God in spirit, we will not reach that level mm-hmm. where we begin to connect with him at that spiritual level, at high level where we understand he flows, his word flows through us. He said, when the Son of Man comes, will he really find faith on earth? Mm. That's a big question. And it's because of the way we subject his word to philosophical examinations. Who gave us the knowledge that we are using? To use our own little knowledge to examine the knowledge of of the knowledge giver. So that, that is our problem, but we know better and we should do better. The word of God stands forever. Amen. Jesus Christ is the true, the way, and the life. He's the life giver. Yes. We cannot turn our back against, we cannot reject him. Can we quickly read Numbers 13, 23 to 33? Uh, I could summarize it, but if we can read it because of our viewers. For the benefit of our viewers, if you can read it, and we just answer one or two questions, and then oh, 13, 13 mm-hmm. verses 23 to 23. Okay. 23 through 23. So, when they reached the valley of Eshkol, mm-hmm. they called off a branch bearing a single cluster of grapes, two of them carried it on a pole between them along with some pomegranates and figs. That place was called the Valley of Eshkol because of the cluster of graves the Israelites caught up there. At the end of the 40 days, they returned from exploring the land. They came back to Moses and Aaron, and the old Israelite community at Kadesh is the desert of Paran. There they reported to them and to the old assembly and showed them the fruit of the land. They gave Moses this account. We went into the land to which you sent us, and it does flow with milk and honey. Here is the fruit. Uh, but the people even saw the descendant of Anak there. Okay. So, but the people who live there are powerful, and the cities are fortified and very large. We even saw the descendants of Anak there. The Amalekites lives in the Negev. The Etites, Gypsites, and Amorites live in the ill country, and the Canaanites live near the sea and along the Jordan. Then Caleb silenced the people before Moses and said, We should go up and take possession of the land, for we can certainly do it. But the men who had gone up with him said, We can attack those people. They are stronger than we are. And they spread among the Israelites a bad report about the land that they had explored. They said, the land we explore devours those living in it. All the people we saw there are of great sizes. We saw the nephilim there. Uh, we see, we seem like grasshoppers uh, <laughs> in our own eyes and we look the same to them. Thank you so much. This was a situation where the Israelites They've been traveling yes. over the years. They've suffered in slavery for over 400 years. And God promised them the promised land. And now they are very close to the promised land. They are just there. Yes. And then out of wisdom, the leadership said, okay, please go and look at the land. So that we can begin to savour, yes. you know, what we are going to inherit. Yes. And he said, 12 people, you cannot be believe this. 10 people came back. <laughs> I said, ah, if you see one banana, it's big like this. <laughs> if you see grape, it's like apple. Yes. If you see everything giant, that two people have to carry a <laughs> bunch grape. of grape yes. in their shoulder. That should call for rejoicing. Yes. That should call for rejoicing. Yes. Because it means you are going to a blessed land. Yes. yes. 
but they turned it around <laughs> and, and made it, it become a, a negative <laughs> report. <laughs> then they said, ah, the people those in that place, they are giants. We seem like grasshopper. <laughs> we cannot conquer the land. Yeah. If we go there, <laughs> Piam, that, that would be the end. Imagine. And of course, uh, looking at how human beings judge things, 10 people gave report out of 12. Yeah. Of course, you, you, the tendency is that you believe the majority. Yeah. But I tell you, majority can be wrong. Yes. Mm. Then everything in life, majority is not always right. right. Majority can be wrong. There could be a factor bringing the majority together that is not godly. So, but thank God for Caleb. Yes. We have two people. Two people said, no. Caleb said, everybody keep quiet. We can conquer these people. We can, yeah. certainly, we do can certainly do so. Because God is with, with, with yeah. us. Yeah. Now, w- looking at the life of Israel, God took you to Red Sea. Yes. Without you, without you lifting a finger, you walk through the desert. Yes. You were not buying shoes. And your shoe did not get old. Exactly. There was no tailor making cloth for you. And your, your cloth did not become raggedy. You, nobody bought umbrella. God will make cloud in the, in the day yeah. so that you, you are not scorched under the sun. And in the night, God will protect you, do everything for you. And this same God said, go and spy and come and give us support. Then you go there and you just melt and forget. Now, tell me, what's the difference, please? What's the difference between these two groups of people? The 10 people that came back with negative report and the two people that decided to be a carrier of good news. It's faith. They faith. They believe in God. Like Caleb and the other person, they have strong faith in the God that they serve. Mm-hmm. And that, that was what helped. They, they have, have faith. They have faith in the the Bible says, yes. if you have faith, you can move mountains. mountains. Yes. Mm-hmm. And the Bible qualified the faith. The Bible did not say your faith should be as big as this cup or that thing. Say as little as the mustard seed. Hmm. That is, I'm not asking too much from you because I know you are humans, you are weak. But even attempt. Let me see that little effort. Mm -hmm. With that little effort, you can go places. So we need to trust in God. We always need to remember what he has done for us. There are times we want to give up. There are times we are tired. There are times we are fed up. There are times that the things ahead of us scares us so much that we feel like, oh, the end has come. (laughs) It is insurmountable. Let us remember the greater things, the worst things that we have overcome in the past, True faith Faith. in the same Jesus Christ. And the same power remains. The same God who helps Israelite to overcome. The same God who helped David to overcome Goliath. It's still the same God we worship today. So please, let us have faith. And we can overcome. And just to buttress everything that we have talked about today. You know, we said, Jesus is the source of life. That was established in today's lesson. Unfortunately, the source was rejected, yes. right? Yes. But we were told that we need to have faith. We need to believe. Yes. There is a reward for believing. If you believe, you will be saved. Yes. Believe and you are saved. But if you reject, if you are one of those who are reject, who are rejecting the source of life, then you will be condemned. Yes. It's just as that simple. So we're talking about condemnation part right now. The Bible was specifically telling us what is going to be the end of those who do not believe. The end of those who are rejecting the source of life. And it was so specific in the book of uh, John chapter 3 verse 36. It says, whoever believes has eternal life. And the verse 36 36 specifically says, if you do not obey the son, you, you shall not have life. It's just word and opposite. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Believe, you shall have eternal yes. life. But if you do not obey and you decided not to believe, you shall you shall not have eternal life. It is just and my version has mm-hmm. but remains under God's angry judgments. Oh, oh. imagine that. Yeah. Imagine that. So um then there's something that we wanted to talk about. Just like we are going through this world of sin right now. Jesus Christ came to die for us. 
Everything we're passing through right now, Jesus Christ has been through it. Our source of life came yes. to die for us. He came to experience everything we're experience, experiencing. The way we are being tempted nowadays to doubt the word of God, he, he experienced everything, See, but he did not. Yeah, he, he went through all of human experiences and he did not succumb. But what helped him was the scripture. So even when he was tempted in the wilderness, he was led into the wilderness, he got tempted over there. The word of the Lord was what saved him. He used the word of God and he said, it is written. It is written. Every time he refers back to the word of God. So we cannot do without the scripture. Yes. We understand that Jesus is the, uh, is the source of life, but it's not just enough for us to stop at that. Let's obey what he has us to do. Because Jesus Christ could have chosen to just uh, override everything. But instead, he used the word of God. Do you have the word of God with you? Those are the questions we should be asking ourselves today. So most importantly, let's always remember that we have that eternal kingdom of God waiting for us. Mm -hmm. And because we want to be part of that eternal kingdom of God, what we're going to do is believe. Increase our faith in God. And I pray that the Lord will help us as we increase our faith in God, that that eternal kingdom of God that we are all expecting will be particles of it in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much, my sister. If you don't have the word of God, you cannot overcome this world. You cannot overcome the temptations the enemy will bring. You cannot become what God wants you to become and who God wants you to be. We encourage you to get deep into the world. I pity our environment today. Children don't know what is wrong and what is right. Parents don't know what is wrong and what is right because of the humanistic approach to dealing with things. Instead of seeing things from God's perspective, how can they know if they have not been taught? Yeah. Jesus overcame the enemy because each time he referred him back, it is written. written. Mm -hmm. So thank you so very much for studying with us. Our time is far spent. We appreciate your loyalty <laughs> <laughs> in this studying the word of God and in this discussion. And we challenge you to keep an open mind with Jesus. He has so many things to benefit by working with Jesus. And we thank you so much for your belief in him. Remember, whosoever believes in him will not perish, but for we have still life. everlasting life. On this note, we will end this discussion. Peace, peace, wonderful peace. <laughs>
Help us to open our minds to you and to the leading of your Holy Spirit, that we will overcome every strategy of the enemy to keep us among the condemned, that we will be with you among the victorious. Thank you for this wonderful opportunity to discuss these things and to remind us and to know that soon and very soon Jesus will return. Thank you so very much as you help us to put to good use all these things that we have learned today. In Jesus' mighty name we have pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you once again for this opportunity to discuss and study with us. We ask that the Lord God Almighty will bless you and help you to keep believing and keep trusting. Remember that soon Jesus will return. Until then, keep believing. God bless. The Three Angels Media International, 3AMI, is a Christian media organization that creates multicultural and multiracial value-based inspirational contents and entertainment using innovative technology. We tell and share stories of hope that shape and mold character, challenge our audiences to schedule their priorities, heal, uplift, and restore. 3 AMI will enrich viewers and diverse populations and families through films, series, shows, comedies, romance, thrillers, documentaries, mission stories, music, faith-based sermons, health and lifestyle, and other media presentations etc. to empower Adventist families and the Christian communities around the world to live on purpose while we wait for the second and soon return of our Lord, Jesus Christ. Subscribe to 3AMI at 3AMIFilms.com Subscribe also to 3AMI YouTube channel.